So earlier covered stress distribution in soil last class, in situ stress, stress due to foundation loading. So in case of stress due to foundation loading, it is primarily important for your design of your foundations that means increase in stress because of your external loading. So stress due to foundation loading, stress caused by a point load, we have started with Bosinix 1985. Then, then vertical stress distribution diagram, one is your isobar, second is your vertical stress distribution on a horizontal plane below the ground surface, vertical stress distribution with the depth at a distance are away from the line of action. So we have covered vertical stress distribution that means isobar, then let us start with vertical stress distribution on a horizontal plane. So, let us assume let take an example z is equal to 2 meter, sigma z is equal to ib or i q by z square. So, then it will be 0 0.25 i into p. Now, take the values, this is your r this is 0, this is 0 0.5, this is 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3 and 4. Let us see how it looks, this is your R, this is your 0, this is your 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2 1.0, 2 1.5, 3.0, 4.0, this will be your R by Z, this will be your IB, this will be your sigma Z. So, for 0, R by Z is equal to 0, sorry, it is not IB, it will be I and this is your sigma Z, this will be your 0 0.47 this will be 0 0.11 q, this will be 0 0.11 q and this will be 0 0.25, this will be 0 0.41, this will be 0 0.126 q, 4.0 this will be 2.0, 0, 0 0.008 and this will be 0 0.0021 q. Now, if I draw it, other values you can find it out, if I draw it, how it looks, this is my load intensity say suppose q and there is a depth, this is at 2 meter, this is a vertical stress distribution on a horizontal plane below 2 meter horizontal plane. If I draw it and this is my center line, so this will be 0 0.1194 q, this is my how your distribution is there vertical stress distribution on a horizontal plane. Similarly, we can find it out vertical stress distribution on a vertical plane.
so sigma z is equal to let me write it equation i into q by z square on a vertical plane means that means your radial distance radial distance is your constant and say r is equal to 1 say r is equal to 1 so r is equal to 1 that means this is your z and this is your 0 0.25 this is 0 0.5 then somewhere else it is coming 0 0.5 intermediate value you can calculate r by z i and sigma z for 0 0.5 it is 4.0 it is 0 0.00 0 0.04 and it will be 0 0.0048 q q and 0 0.5 it will be 2.0 it will be 0 0.0085 it will be 0 0.0340 q and it is not 0 0.5 it will be 5.0 in case of 5.0 it will be 0 0.2 0 0.4324 0 0.0173 q now if i draw it if i plot it in this way suppose say r is equal to 1 this is your q so, in this way if I plot it, this is how it comes out. So, this maximum suppose for r is equal to 1 maximum intensity I am getting at a depth z is equal to 1.22 meter. And this is coming 39 degree 39 degree point 15 and if you look at why i have taken up to 5 beyond 5 means here is supposed to be your 5 beyond 5 there is no change in stress distribution on a vertical plane and maximum stress distribution observe for r is equal to radial distance r is equal to 1 at a depth z is equal to 1.22 meter this is how first one is your isobar isobar means it is supposed to be below the base of the footing base of the load intensity at the just below the load intensity it is supposed to be 0 0.4775 then second one is your vertical stress distribution on a horizontal plane i have taken a for example z is equal to 2 meter here intensity maximum intensity located below your point load this will be 0 0.1194 q similarly if you go to now vertical stress distribution vertical stress distribution on a vertical plane on a vertical plane where sigma z is equal to i into q by z square any radial distance i have taken r is equal to 1 r is equal to 1 any radial distance after 5.0 meter after 5.0 meter there is no change in there is no variation in vertical stress distribution in a vertical plane that is why for example for r is equal to 1 I have drawn up to 5.0 depth and for r is equal to 1 maximum vertical stress distribution observed to be at z is equal to 1.22 meter and angle made is your 39 degree point 39 degree. Now, let us come back to 
this is about your point load so vertical stress by a line load second one is your vertical stress by a line load vertical stress by a line load so basically it started this derivation is basically from the extended version from the your vertical stress below a point load let me draw in such a way it will be more you can understand more easily this will be your z and this will be your p into x y and z and this is your x and now i am taking in this directions So, let us consider small part here, this will be your delta y and pressure intensity is q pi meter, here it will be minus infinity, here it will be plus infinity and this distance will be this is your radial distance. So, how it can be happened? I can take what what will be there initially for point load if you come back to here point load what is that equation 3 by 2 pi p by z square or maybe q by z square into 1 by r by z whole square plus 1 to the power 5 by 2 if this equation can be written in this form consider a point load delta sigma z is equal to considering it will be your 3 p by 2 pi z q by r square plus z square to the power phi by 2. Then in this case I can take it p is equal to there is a infinity small that is your q into delta y p is your load intensity here q is equal to load intensity per meter length i have considered a small infinitely small element delta y if i write it change it into it will be 3 small q into delta y by 2 pi and it will be z q by r square plus z square to the power phi by 2 and which is equal to 3 q z q by 2 pi because it is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity let us say minus infinity to plus infinity it will be d y by r square plus z square to the power it will be your 5 by 2 to the power 5 by 2. Now, if I write it, it will be integrated. If I write it, sigma z is equal to 3 q z q by 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity d y by r square plus y square plus z square to the power 5 by 2. So, what will happen let us say x square plus z square is equal to u square. Now, 
So, if I put it y is equal to u tan theta and dy is equal to u sec square theta d theta, then how it comes out to be in the form of if I solve it, it is coming out to be sigma z is equal to 2 q by pi z into 1 by 1 plus x by z whole square here it is a whole square. After solving this equations, after solving this equation 2 q by pi z 1 by 1 plus x by z whole square to the power whole square. This is how your pressure intensity for a line load. Similarly, vertical stress distribution by a strip load, this will be this will be your x and this will be your b, this will be b and this will be your vertical distance z this will be your r dr this is your r dr so then this is your distance x so what will happen vertical stress distribution by a strip load by a strip load so it will be vertical stress distribution by a strip load it will be delta sigma z is equal to integration minus b by 2 to plus b by 2 dz which is equal to minus b by 2 to plus b by 2 2 q by pi into z q by x square minus r square plus z square into whole square into dr. There are charts available. This instead of either you can solve it by whatever the formulas are available or you can integrate it. It is very easy. It started with a point load and it has been extended for line load. Now, it has been extended for a strip load. All charts are allowed for examinations. Now, come to next part that is your vertical stress, it is your d. vertical stress below the center of a uniformly loaded circular area. Now, look at here why we are solving it many times we encounter a circular footing. So, this kind of load intensity may come into picture this is your r and if I am taking a small part this is your dr and this will be r. and this will be your stress distribution at here and this will be your load intensity q per unit area load intensity per unit area because this is an load distributed over the circular loaded area so in this case same thing can be extended as for the point load you can start with 
d or maybe delta sigma z is equal to 3 p by 2 pi then it will be z q by r square plus z square to the power 5 by 2 then here 3 p will be 3 into q r d r d alpha. So, this is your d r and this angle is your d alpha. So, what happens small load intensity q small q load intensity over the, the area d r and over the angle d alpha it has to be integrated. So, then it will be z q by r square plus z square here to, to the power 5 by 2 then this will be alpha is equal to 0 to alpha is equal to 2 pi r is equal to 0 to r is equal to r here it will be 3 q by 2 pi z q r by r square plus z square into 5 by 2 dr d alpha. So, basically what I am doing this is for a as if it is a point load acting at the center then point load what is the force here either it is a p or q this p and q will be converted here taking into a small element this is a small element dr and this small element dr then in this case what is there load intensity q per unit area so q into r distance this is your r q into r dr into d alpha then it will be z q by r square plus z square to the power 5 by 2 and it is varying because there are two unknowns one is alpha one is your r. So, r is varying from here it is 0 to r r to r that means r is equal to 0 to r is equal to r that means entire radius then alpha is varying from here 0 and it is going towards here it will be a 2 pi pi completely this is your 2 pi. So, alpha is equal to 0 to 2 pi integrated over this then you will get the value the value is your q into 1 minus 1 by r by z whole square plus 1 into 3 by 2 which is equal to q into i. So, graphical form they have given graphical form this is your z by r and this is your delta sigma z by q. So, it is varying from 0 0.0 to 1.0 and this comes out to be in this form. So, either you use the chart you know the load intensity q you know the z by r z is your distance r is your radius. For example, suppose there is a circular loaded this is your ground surface this is your ground surface below there is a circular footing here at a distance the footing is suppose at a distance z is equal to 2 meter right. Suppose the radius is equal to r is equal to 3 meter. So, you can get it z by r is equal to 2 by 3. So, this you mark it here it is varying from 0, 0.0 to 6.0 and delta sigma q by q is 0, 0.0 to 1.0 right. So, then you mark it here what the value you are getting you extend it it is intersecting this point curve 
or the chart you extend it once you extend it then you are getting the value of delta sigma z by q suppose this value is equal to 0.2 now increase in stress is equal to delta sigma z below z is equal to 2 meter so in this case which is equal to q what is your load intensity for example load intensity is your say 2 kilo newton per meter square so it will be your 2 into 0.2 so it will be a 0.4 kilo newton per meter square so this is how you are going to find it out from the charts and uh, other part i'll start with a long one what is that that is all. similarly we can find it out vertical stress by a, a rectangular loaded area as well as approximate methods and few more examples. I will stop it here. So, next class I will start with this vertical stress by a rectangular loaded area as well as approximate methods. Thank you.